Amber Rose was introduced to the entertainment world as the muse girlfriend of Kanye West. And after a public breakup, she found her voice defending women against what she calls slut shaming, which is what she says she experienced. Her striking looks, her much talked about body, and her very public love life have made it easy for people to label her. Amber Rose has earned millions of dollars, but as they say, money cannot buy happiness. And now she is ready for a major life reset that she hopes will give her more joy and more of what she finds most important than fame, more than fame, her relationship with her two young children. You might think you know me. The Amber Rose you've seen in magazines, on social media, gossip sites, this is not really who I am. And I think it's time to dive deep. I was like, bye. <laughs> What's it like to grow up with a mama who really loves you? Scary. <laughs> no. No. What's in the ocean? Water. Like, so good. Water. Boom, boom. Can we zoom in on that? That's who she says she is. Please welcome, for the first time to the TAM fam, Amber Rose. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. 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 Thank you. Oh, my God. Hi. You know, Welcome to the TAM fam. Oh, thank you for having me. Of I'm course, so excited. Of course, I'm excited too. You know, I said at the beginning, we get the guests um, that are meant for the show. And what I mean more clearly by that is God gives us the people that I'm meant to talk to. And I mean by that because we all have a story, mm -hmm. but I always want to know your real story, right. not the TV tabloid. And then when I saw you launch this show, that you really sincerely want people to know you. Right. I started digging in to who you were, the girl from Philly, mm -hmm. the kid that was the underdog. Right. <laughs> the kid who was the underdog trying to figure out life. Totally. But I got to know you as one of these images, mm -hmm. like the rest of the world. Why is it time for you? Why, why do you think now? Well, I think initially, um, when I got into the entertainment business, I was kind of thrown to the sharks. Mm. Uh, I didn't necessarily ask for it. It kind of just happened. And then I think... Well, the... does, like, does it just happen? Because, okay, let's... It does. I mean... Well, for me. And... Well, okay, so going back to the girl from Philly, you've been open that you were a dancer at an adult entertainment place. Yes. Um, that is a form of entertainment, right? So that is jumping in by choice, if you will, to a world of entertainment. Well, no. No? No. I think that was more survival. Survival. You know, I always wanted to study infectious diseases. You I did? wanted to be a scientist. Um, and then I met a girl around the neighborhood, and she's like, Amber, if you really need money, I could I could show you how to do this. So, so it wasn't like right. I saw the glitz and glamour of that profession and wanted to do that. I've always been an introvert. Um, even like so my striking. friends. So take me to that. Yeah. You know, as we learn the real you. Mm -hmm. I, I go back to those past moments only to understand, even though it was about survival, it was mm -hmm. a choice, right? You made yeah. the choice to survive this way. And you're an introvert, and it's that first day you're walking in, mm -hmm. and you know that there are people there paying to see your body. Yes. Paying to not see your heart, not know you. Yeah. I can't imagine the, the fear, especially knowing you're I didn't an introvert. think about it. You didn't? No, I needed money. Right. But you're an introvert. Doesn't matter. Yeah. When you have to survive, you need somewhere to live and eat. That You don't think about any of that. It really is the beginning of you fighting this introvert mm -hmm. to survive. And then you survive only to end up in glitzy, beautiful Hollywood among sharks. Right. And then you have to survive. Yes. Again. Yes. When you got to the point where now you're in LA and your face is in magazines. Cause I remember, the, I remember specifically, cause I said, that is the next Bianca Jagger. Cause I'd never seen someone so striking. You're next to Kanye West and you're shining. You're next to your ex-husband Wiz Khalifa and you're shining. Period. And so it's true, it's true. <laughs> it's Thank true. You, and Thank you. It's true, you're shining. And I said, 
it's a mistake to call her, you know, a uh, girlfriend of XXX. Mm -hmm. I said, she is shining off the page. Well, I, I think at some point I was like, when people were so mad at me for becoming famous, for being essentially a girlfriend initially, yeah. I was like, at some point you have to blame the consumer because I'm not doing anything. Like, I'm just, I'm here. You know, I'm trying to make a living. And I think the misconception is, is that once you get fame, you become a millionaire. Yeah. Um, that is not true. Yeah. So you get this fame. And then for me, I had to say, okay, how do I make money? I, I need to become an entrepreneur. I need to start dipping my hands in everything and figuring out again, how to survive. Right, because to your point, you'd become famous yeah. for being in, in- A relationship. A relationship. Yeah. But then you were smart enough to say, this is not gonna pay my bills, and when this relationship is over, it's still me, right. Amber depending on Amber. Totally, yeah. So it's funny, I was just talking to my friend Janice. We've been friends for 28 years, so yeah. we were 12 years old. And she said, Am, do you realize that we have been in survival mode for like 30 years. Right. I just turned 40. 30 years we've been in survival mode. Thank you. And that's deep. That is deep. You know, and we're just realizing that now. That's the crazy part. We're just actually realizing that we don't know how to not be in survival mode. I don't know how to sit back and let's say someone's like, I got this for you. I'm like, no, 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 I'll do it. Yeah. Cause I know I'm going to do it right. And I, I know what I got to do. Like, I don't know how to sit back and allow someone to do that for me. I, I've you've always had, had to, to do it. You've always had to do it. So since you went basically global mm -hmm. as this famous face, you have felt under siege, judged. Yeah, but it doesn't compare to my life before this. So, um, I'm built for it because this is, these are, these are strangers that I don't know, right? These aren't people that I've known and loved that hurt me because that, that was my life before this, in, enduring. But any scrutiny that I can go through, I, like, I don't even, I don't even watch my own YouTube videos. I just do them and I put them out into the universe and the world and just let them be what they are. At this point where you are, it's important for you to people, for people to see you. I mean, I watched the video, you cooking, mm -hmm. feeding the dog, laughing in the car. Yeah. It is like you want to pull us in to see this person, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you're still working through what appears to be a lot of pain. And is this new show a, a form of protecting yourself? I think this is more so like I'm tired. I I'm tired of, um, not speaking up. I have not spoken up about anything, anything that I've ever been through in my life, my story, what people have done to me. Um, I just always, you know, I grew up in South Philly. I grew up in, in the hood. I grew up very, they breed us in South Philly to never snitch, never tell, never say anything. And I'm tired, I'm, I'm, I'm 40 years old, I'm a mother hands-on mother, I have two children. I'm just ready for people to just get to know Amber. I'm tired of being so politically correct and you know, saying the right thing. I need to just be me. Whatever that is, that's what I'm gonna be.